Hello and welcome to episode two of the Van Dyke Mortgage WMC Sports Podcast brought to you by Durgan Insurance Group. I'm Brett Rath, host of the podcast, and I'm joined with my fellow co-host, Scott DeCamp, a.k.a. DeVamp, a.k.a. Twitter Blue Check. Scott, how was your weekend? Good. It was quick. Quick. I slept a few hours Friday night, then played golf. You did not look. You did not look like you slept at it. all. Saturday. I wasn't in it in the in the in the front nine of that scramble we you, played in. You you just wasn't didn't have it. You put Connor on like a backpack with the chipping <laughs> and putting. I'll tell you on Saturday he he, he was uh, he was struggling, but yeah, but it got better as the weekend went on. And we got Tate the Jayhawk Stein here. <laughs> Tate, what did you do this weekend? I was working at Michigan's Adventures. It was my second to last week, and. Oh. 12,500 people showed up. Are you kidding me? Did you get any saves? There, I had to respond to a major emergency. Did you really? Yeah. What happened? Well, what happened was is I was going over to a... Uh, I was walking to break. Long story short, I was walking to break, and I heard the three-long whistle, which indicates a major emergency. So one of my bosses came over. She goes, I need someone to grab the backboard. So I run over, and I'm running through shoulder I, to shoulder. People. I'm not going to lie. I'm thinking Baywatch. Some people <laughs> stand in the dark. Did like, you rip your shirt off whole, first or not? Well, yeah, of course. Right, sure. <laughs> and then I grabbed the backboard. No. So I grabbed the backboard, and I'm sprinting through all these people, shoulder to shoulder. And finally, I get there, and there's blood on the ground. Oh, at no. the bottom of a slide, and I go, oh, no. And I'm looking around. My boss is just stunned standing there. And so I turn around, and this woman's toenails ripped off. <laughs> 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 You're saving toenails. Oh, just just I loving it. it. I just wanted to eat my lunch. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I always like to begin the podcast by saying thank you to our sponsors. Of course, without them, we couldn't do any of this. Uh, nothing would get paid for. And Scott and Tate, you guys would be working for free. <laughs> um, so Grieve Law, Big Stone Therapies, Green Ridge Realty, Chris Dykema and Sarah Real over there, uh, Green Ridge, North Grove Brewers. Um, go get yourself a beer at North Grove if you can. It's good food, too. Uh, Foundation Systems of Michigan and John Botten. Um, John's a good supporter of ours. Coldwell Banker Dave Dusenberry. You know, Dave loves him some high school athletics. Um, Scheid Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. And then a special thank you to our title sponsors, uh, Van Dyke Mortgage Lakeshore, and Mario and his crew. Uh, they're committed to finding you the right home loan, um, and they're second to none. Uh, their experience, their licensed team is ready to work with you and ensure a smooth and timely loan process from application to closing. Check them out, 46 or 460 West Western Avenue in Muskegon, or give them a call, 231-332-6500. And then certainly... Certainly, last but not least, uh, Derg Insurance Group, um, Jordan and Justin down there, um, they look uh, look at success a little differently than other people, um, placing relationship in their clients first, regardless of what stage of life you're in. They're there for you each step of the way to offer a, a level of insight that, that uh, you care and uh, deserve. Check them out at their offices at 1535 Far Road in Norton Shores or call them Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. So we're happy to welcome our guests this week. Dusty Fairfield, a legendary coach of the Ravenna Bulldogs. Uh, Dusty took over a dormant Ravenna program in the late, late 1980s and put him on the football map, advancing to the 1988 Class C state finals, and over the next 20 years built Ravenna into one of the finest programs in the state of Michigan, winning state titles in 94, 96, 97, and 2003. Dusty, I know you because I went to Montague and graduated in 95, so uh, I saw some pretty good Ravenna teams over my sure. time there, so um, it's a pleasure to meet you, and uh, welcome to the podcast. Well, thank you, and I appreciate being here. First podcast, right? First. That's yeah. awesome. Say I did everything. We, we like rookies. Yeah. Uh, Ken Diamond was on last week, and it was his first as well, so... And, um, a good friend of his, and I always enjoyed Ken. So. Yeah. I, I asked him what his record was against you and uh, Jack, so he, he said he thinks you guys got the better of him. Yeah, but he, he you know, he got us once in a while. Yeah, yeah. I said in our last podcast, the best one of the best high school football games I ever watched, we beat Oak Ridge 21-20 on a, on a two-point conversion with, like, no time left at Montague. Mm -hmm. It was one of the best games I ever watched. A little bit of different football back then. Oh. The ball wasn't in the air quite as much, but like, you know, mm -hmm. so, um, so yeah, no. Um, so kind of with that idea, you know, we, we just like to go around and, and talk about football, talk mm -hmm. about sports. So um, it's that time of year again. And football is definitely king in the fall, right? Like Absol as much as, Absolutely. as much as people want to talk about other sports, I mean, football is kind of king. Mm -hmm. um, so I'd like to hear from you guys in regards to the Whitehall Vikings. 
What are your thoughts? I've been bullish on him. I, I keep using that word, but I was bullish on him all summer. Um, and people give me some, some flack. They're like, you guys say that every year. You know, they always look good in uniform. They're, you know, the biggest school, not anymore, in the le- biggest school anymore in the league. But Who's the biggest, the biggest school, school? Ludington? Ludington now. Yeah. Oak Ridge is pretty much right there with Whitehall. But, I mean, if you see these kids, they just, they've got athletes. they got a lot of them. They've got big, fast athletes. They've got big, strong athletes. Um yeah, and then they kind of, in Unity, I mean, they took care of Unity, which, <laughs> yeah, 54 26, which, so I don't, how good is this Unity team? I, I don't know yet, but still, that, Unity's got a phenomenal program. I mean, they, they, they went there. I mean, it's tough to win on the road any, any, any time you look at it, but yeah, they went there. Who knows how good they are? 54 26 was not what I expected. Of course, I get, accused of being a homer all the time so like can we is this a appropriate platform to to share the what a message that i got from yes go ahead tony sigmund's dad <laughs> um and i think i know he watches this podcast watches our all shows they love it unity he said he said tell that montague guy in there to give whitehall a little credit every now and then i gave him credit i said <laughs> i said they were the team to beat in the conference this year i did i did and i really still truly believe that i mean they uh they look to be what people thought they were like. I, I talked to, um, oh, uh, Tom Jenkins at the football outing because I went to the Whitehall football outing golf thing Friday, and I told him I said like that Unity came out smacked him in the mouth. I mean they put points on the board right away and just kept scoring. And usually, you know, again I'm not trying to be home. We're usually Whitehall folds in that situation. I mean they yeah. they don't do well in that situation oftentimes, but they didn't. I mean they just. I kept watching the feed come in, and I'm like, holy crap. You know, Stratton played amazing. And then in the second half, they just kind of stepped on him. I, I mean, want to know like, what the other Montague guy who's not far removed from those, yeah, that's from true. Now, Tate, those high school Tate's kids. Close what do you have to say about that uh, Whitehall dynamic? I can't say it too much different than you guys are saying. I mean, like I said back in media day, they look big. Yep. I think it's one in the trenches, and they're big in the trenches. And then you go to their skill players, and they obviously got a couple of skill players too. And – after they smacked Unity in the second half and won that by almost 30, I want to go, oh, this just cements what I think, but we got a lot of football left to play. <laughs> yep. I don't want to say it, but I don't want any injuries to happen, but it's possible. So I don't... Long way to go. I, so it's still way hope. Dusty, do you follow football still? I mean, you still keep up? I or? follow football, but I do a lot, um, you know, at the college level now yeah. as far as following um, Ferris because oh, I, live, yeah. I live on Lake Macosta, which is about 15 minutes from oh, the practice. Oh, that's awesome. So I'm able to go to their games, and I'll go to their game this Thursday. And um, and then I went to the Ravenna game, oh, uh, nice. Beale City, on Friday night, and uh, our 97 state championship team had a 25-year anniversary. That's amazing. Uh, it was just really a, a cool uh, night for um, not just myself, but, you know, um, all my players came with their family. Yeah. They've got their wives and their kids now, and that's just so cool to see. And then I've got grandkids hanging on you know each hand <laughs> yeah. leg and they're able to watch the, yep. oh yeah you know they call me peepa but their <laughs> grandfather you know they they get yeah. caught up on everything so that's kind of cool so i was at the ravenna game last year at ravenna when uh, you were there uh benny was there what what year was that that, that was the 96 96 okay Yes. Yeah. So that w- that was kind of cool because I again I, I played sports against a lot of those guys. Right. So you know it was, right. it was pretty cool to see that. But so uh, talking about Whitehall, you know, like one of the things you probably have a good handle on is what it takes to maybe take that next step as a program. So you know what what does Whitehall need to do this year? I guess to to make sure that they continue to 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 improve and maybe maybe keep that keep that momentum or take that next step because. They've had some good teams. They've run they've run the the conference before, but they seem to get in the playoffs and they don't seem to have the same success that maybe a an Oak Ridge or Ravenna Montague's had. Um, how does Tony take that next step? I guess. Well, what I would tell you about Whitehall, um, when when it comes to the Blue Bloods, the Ravennas, yep. and and the Oak Ridges and the Montagues, um, we won championships back then. Um, because we were able to test ourselves against the White, White Halls. Halls. That's true. Okay, and, that and is way true. back when, before they went to this new Rivers and Lakes Conference this year, they were trying to do this <clears throat> 20 years ago. Yeah. And um, I put my foot down. I, I didn't want to see it happen, but it was a selfish reason is because 
I didn't want to be going against small schools. I wanted to get prepared for the playoffs. Right. And teams like Whitehall did that for me. And we had some really barn burners with, with Whitehall. Oh, yeah. And, um, and, and then you get field tested. I, I'm a believer that uh, iron sharpens iron. Yeah, so I would agree with that. Therefore, I, I always um, thought that uh, Whitehall took a very um, a strong stance to stay in the West Michigan Conference. Um, and, and it took um, a lot of guts to do it because they were one of the larger teams. Right. It probably wasn't doing them as good uh, because they ended up having to play in a tougher division. And uh, so now that they're they're in the lakes, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Um, now now they're gonna they're gonna um, have some games where uh, iron sharpens iron, and if they can um, uh, stay healthy and they can get to the end of the season. Um, each season is within itself. Yeah. Um, I, I'm a firm believer. I think I think it's really important to to have a winning tradition, and, and I think it carries over, and I think it helps. But um, every school has one special year. Ours was '88, yep. where they got propelled into the playoffs and 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 uh, got wins. And I think maybe this is Whitehall's year. Yeah. And to Tony's credit. I mean, when you look at their schedule, I talked to him early, like he is not backing off of even non-conference. I mean, they got Hastings next week or this, this week, week, right? Yeah. Like who did Alpina the week after, I think, which yeah. is a bigger school. At Ferris, they play at Ferris at yeah. week three. I mean, they're non-conference. Whitehall does. Yeah. So yeah. if you might be able to pop up there and see them. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. They, so, I mean, Tony hasn't backed off that. I mean, he's, he's, t- he's taking on some of the, the challenge there and, you know, I was kind of joking around early this year. I'm like, they, they could enter the Montague game the best 0-3 team around with the, the teams that they scheduled. I mean, like, um, but, again, I, I didn't pick them to beat Tri-Unity. And they, they – I mean, but they're big, they're fast, they're skilled everywhere. I mean, like, it's – I think they're the only people in their way is them, to be honest with you. So, um, yeah. So, any other surprises in the conference? I mean, you guys covered a lot of games Friday night, Thursday night. Like, any other surprises for you guys? I thought it was a little bit of a surprise to see Muskegon Catholic beat uh, North Muskegon. Yeah, North yeah Muskegon that's a good has one. a special team this year. Yep. They throw the ball like 45 times yep. a game. <laughs> um, and, um, and, you know, Steve Zerwans just does a great job at yeah. Muskegon Catholic, and that is a big win for Steve. Yes. It's a huge win. Yeah, yeah, and they got, and Catholic has Oak Ridge this week at home. So Whew, they're that's not another, talking about that backing one. off. Yeah, I mean, like, that's. I mean, Catholic's never been afraid to play anybody. Like, they'll go, they'll go play. It's another kind of thing, like yeah. what you mm-hmm. were saying, you know. Um, no, that that surprised me a little bit. I picked North Muskegon. I they've got, I did too. They've got some talent. I, think I did. They definitely have some talent. I picked them to win the the uh, Rivers Division. Yeah, I would. I still, they're still my pick to do that. So, yeah, yeah. I, I I couldn't believe Ravenna coughed it up at Beale City. To be honest with you, yeah. I thought like watching the scores come in, I'm like, oh yeah, they got them handled. I was there. I was on the sidelines, and it was it was um, it was really hard to watch the second half. The first half was wonderful. It yeah, was all positive. It was great. The second half, once the kids started cramping up, uh, once Hunter Hogan went out of the game, yeah, uh, it completely totally changed. changed the. The um, feeling and the momentum went the other way. And, Did they come back in? I mean, or were they just out? Um, was he, he out? He was out? out pretty much the entire time, and then he did go in towards the end. Uh, but by then, the momentum was Completely so changed. strong on Beale City side that um, all they had to do was get a couple first downs, okay, and then the game's over. Over, yeah. And they didn't, and that's that's, huh. that's what. I mean, happened. a bunch of them cramped up. I mean, you as a recent athlete, I mean, what's that like? I mean, we've all had them. We all probably still get them from time to time. Yeah, but what? 3 a.m. laying in my bed. Oh, that, that's me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, the left yeah. calf. No, I, I was never one that cramped up for whatever yeah, reason. Yeah, me neither. I never had them in an athletic event. Instead, I just tore ligaments. But <laughs> other people. He just blows his knee out. You <laughs> just get right to the good stuff. <laughs> but like other people, for example, Paul Olson is one that yeah, has really bad. And he'll get them in both, in both calves right away. But I've had them a couple times, and I know. I don't know exactly why they work out. So there's dehydration, but mm-hmm. I I think I'd take a sprained ankle over a bad <laughs> over a bad cramp sometimes. So, sometimes. so <laughs> let me I gotta say something real quick, just because coach is here. I was at a fantasy football draft uh, Saturday. I'm not in it, but a, a bunch of my he friends just and go, stuff. Were in. He just I just go out. for the fun. <laughs> right. So I was talking to Scott Fleming, and he said, "Ask Dusty about when Willie Rollison got cramps that time." What he said. You know, I can't remember about a banana. 
Well, can, I can you get the kid a banana or something? Like well, that? no, um, <laughs> no. I, I had yeah. I had yeah. a tradition at Ravenna, and I thought it was a good one. And someone just mentioned this to me on Friday when everyone was cramping up. Number one. Um, I think I was one of the first coaches um, back in the late 80s that um, you could get water anytime you wanted in my practice. I mean, it didn't matter. We, right. had, we had water bottles everywhere, and, yeah, and, keep I, hydrated. I, and I just felt you, you need to do that in the game, so why wouldn't you do it in practice? And yeah. I know most coaches all do that now, but not back then. Hmm. you know. And, and the other thing um, when it comes to uh, cramps and stuff is every Thursday we had our – walk through yep. practice before the game and our tradition afterwards um, I would always let whoever practiced the hardest that week no matter what your position on the team were not yep. having a position you got to choose what we were going to wear for the game we knew we were going to be maybe blue shirts but we could go blue white and blue blue and that right. kind of thing mm-hmm. and then we broke out bananas uh, I had a guy come to the field <laughs> and everybody awesome. had a banana and when everybody had a banana and don't eat your banana before everybody else you know it's kind of like Wait. a toast yeah mm-hmm. and we peeled it back and then we said something about the game and then everybody toasted and everybody ate a banana Thursday night a little I, potassium and, <laughs> potassium and everything else and then we we did um we did a lot of uh, um, hydration um during the day you know, Benny walked yeah. around with a water bottle, you yeah. know, and um, and that that's all important. And Scott and I were talking about um, cramps and stuff. And, and the other thing about cramps is this, you know, you're going to get into a game and you're going to give 100 percent because it's a game. Yep. The crowd, the, the electricity in the air, everything. Well, you got to find a way in practice to um, to go 100 Replicate miles an that. hour. Because if you go uh, 85 miles an hour in practice and then all of a sudden you go 100 in the game, um, that's when you're going to cramp up. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Now, the good thing is um, that the guys who cramp up, well, you don't cramp up unless you're really trying hard, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I always jo- I always laugh because one of the worst things, and you guys are going to chuckle, when I was in the service, one of the worst things in the world, it wasn't push-ups, it wasn't a- any of the, the stuff you see. They used to make you drink water like it was like, I mean, just nonstop. Like they'd make you, as soon as you get off a bus... You'd have a full canteen. They'd make you drink it. They'd give you 30 seconds, and everybody would have to flip it over, and there better not be a drop that comes out. And we'd do that probably 10 or 15 times a day, but we're in, you know, uh, Georgia in the middle of the summer, and that's how they kept people from getting heat stroke and falling out and having all kinds of stuff. But, yeah, that's 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 good stuff. I mean, and, and like you said, practicing hard and being ready for that, like that's – that's a big deal. Uh, I know that my son plays soccer, and Owen had some cramping problems Friday, I think it was, and took him out. And he's like, I can't move my whole leg. But, you know, it never really bothered me. I don't know. So, but, um, you know, talking some more footballs or football stuff, I mean, North Muskegon, I kind of was, I thought North Muskegon would beat Catholic. I still think they're a phenomenal team. Mm-hmm. Um, I was a little surprised to see Ravenna like be ahead and then lose. Other than that, there wasn't a lot of surprises, I guess, for me. Um, I thought the Montague, I thought Montague would be a little farther ahead of Spring Lake than they were, but it's early in the season and like, you know, mm. Spring Lake's a bigger school, you know, that can happen. Um, any, Spring anything, Lake has a new coach, you know, from Cadillac, yeah, so, yeah. you know, trying to figure that out in the scouting yeah. and everything. Yeah, and then going back to North Muskegon and getting beat 24 to 22, um, if I were, um, evaluating North Muskegon right now, I would tell them, hey, look, at, um, we need more than 35 yards on the ground. Yeah, if we're I going was, to win mm-hmm. football games, you, you know, I love yep. to pass the ball too. But if you can't run the football in certain situations and you can't run a clock out at the end at the and end. so on and so forth, yep. then then you need to start practicing that a little bit more and you better find yourself about five good running plays. Yeah, I I was surprised when I looked at the, uh, at the scoreboard and you had Belmonte and he only – he had like 35 yards yeah, like and he's a great back it. i mean he's sure. he's fast kid athletic so that did surprise me a little too and and i you know i, I did not see the game um i did talk to steve zerwan before and yep. after but um you know do they have any draws in their package yeah things like that yeah yeah, yeah interesting a- any other players that stood out to you so um i can tell you friggin kyle stratton had himself a game at whitehall right like that's obvious defensively and offensively well um, speaking on the topic of cramps uh-oh. he had already thrown for 
three touchdowns and run for another. And then he went out with cramps. He was getting, he was on his back, getting his legs stretched yep. out. Next play, he comes in, pick six. Pick six, yep. So, he, I mean, yeah, you can come back from, I mean, and I know there's different severities yeah. and all that. I'm not trying to make, you know, make light of yeah. the Ravana kids or anything like that by any means. But, yeah, he came in and played. But he's supposed to be a homer. You can't, you can't, like. <laughs> We're homers. Yeah. I'm a homer. Yeah, I, <laughs> When I was announced for Muskegon football for a couple of years, you know, someone said, "Hey, you, you sound like a homer on the radio." You're like, "I am." I am. <laughs> <laughs> I love mm-hmm. it. I love it. Um, any anybody else stood out? I mean, Young had himself a pretty good game. Uh, James Young for North Muskegon. I mean, he threw the ball pretty well. Mm-hmm. Sophomore. Um, no, Fremont back Durheimer had 180 yards. I want to yeah. say. Who, the, who did Fremont play? I can't remember. Uh, Hart. Hart. It'd be Hart. 22 yeah. to eight, and then. Um, the kid from Ludington. Um, name's slipping my mind right now. I know that surprises you. Ludington. Yeah, that does surprise me. You, you're like <laughs> the, uh, the running back. <laughs> the running back there I had like ask 180. Him who, who, was the, who was the starting running back for Oak Ridge in 1983? <laughs> and Scott would be like, oh, not just will he know his name, he'll know Scott his Scott Morgan, sta- maybe? See, <laughs> he'll know his <laughs> stats and his, like, it's crazy. But, yeah, no, um. Yeah, so uh, Paul Olson had a pretty good game for Monty. He had a couple big, big plays. Um, and then uh, the Danisek kid from Oak Ridge had a pretty good game, too. Now, is is he returning or is he a brother of the – He's a brother. He's a brother. There was a – was it Nate? Here we Nate go. Nate's the dad, right? Hmm. I'm not sure. Nate's the dad, I believe. So, yeah, there was a kid – there was a brother. Was it Jacob? I don't know. I'm, 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 I'm off. That's over. I work. We count on you for this stuff. I know you got to count like, on me. You, you can't even me. do that today. So you know. So. No, but yeah, he's the younger brother. But yeah. he's that kid. Matthew Danichek really hits it hard in the weight room. Does he? Mm-hmm. He. They. I mean, they. They had a good win too. Oak Ridge going to Sparta and and picking up the W's. I mean. Again, that's a yeah. Good, they're at home. Or were they that's, home? That's yeah. still a good win. Yeah, so that's yeah. A good. Good start for them. It's not as good of a win. Playing at Oak Ridge, they like to win there. <laughs> so, but no, I'm just kidding. But um, so week one's in the books. We got some surprises. Got some. You didn't didn't see a lot because a lot of non-conference stuff. But um, you know, how right now do you guys think that the uh, expansion of the conference is going? Like looking at it, and I'm gonna I'm gonna play a little devil's advocate right here, okay. right? Like. So a lot of the expansion stuff that was talked about was, you know, getting teams to play like teams and playoff points, right? Like you said, Whitehall it doesn't make a lot of sense for Whitehall to play Hart and North Muskegon. It's all downside for them. Even if they win, they might not get as many playoff points as if they played up. Exactly. Right? Um, some of that too was making making games better, right? Like you need to go up to Hart, and my, my cousin Brian always talks about. I mean, he had like 400 yards at Hart one year, and I'm like, but it was Hart. Right. Like, I mean, you know, like exactly. So uh, some of the things that I've seen, though, is like I don't know that Orchard View is going to give any of these bigger teams a better game than Hart does. And I don't know if Manistee is I like what. So I guess what are your thoughts on that? I mean, is is, did we just trade Hart and and Shelby and some of those teams in that upper division for teams that you're going to have still lopsided games? Um, do you think? Do you guys think that those teams? And I know OV historically is good, right? Like, I mean, they've had some really good programs there. Are, is the conference going to bring their level of play up? Like, what are, what are your thoughts there? I, I think so. I, I think it will, but I don't think the first year it will. Right, yeah, absolutely. And so I, I think it again. You're you're looking at evolving yeah. into that. My data so, set's too small. So right yeah. now, no. Is there a big difference between um, a, a Shelby and? Um, and an OV? No, not yeah. right now. But will there be if they, you know, Keep that's playing. what this is all supposed to do. And it does make sense okay. to do it that way. It's just that, like I say, a Ravenna uh, or someone in the conference that now they're going to play the Smalls, the, the Hesperias. Yep. The whole, I, it's, it's not going to help them come playoff time. I'm just telling you. So I, I'm curious to know, how do you feel about the playoff structure? Like the points and the, I mean, we had this weird COVID year where they let everybody in. Mm-hmm. It didn't seem to go poorly. You, you know, I mean, there were some, there were some blowout games, but there always right. is in the first round. How do you feel about the playoff structure right now? I, I was a regional director um, for the state of Michigan and there's 32 of them. And um, so I was, uh, 
you know, part of that uh, group that looked into expanding the playoffs in the first place. Yep. The first time I made the playoffs in 88, there were only four classes. Yeah. And that was <laughs> yeah. tough, let me tell you. And you had to go undefeated. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Montague, when Chuck Hulse was there, I think they went undefeated twice and did not make the playoffs. And they were That's undefeated. Crazy. Um, so that that had to expand to eight. Um and I'm glad it did because then, you know, it doesn't cheapen a championship. Right. Um, no, when you win a, champ, a state championship. You go through it's, some good it, teams. It, it's yeah. really, really difficult. Um, I have a hard – I wish all the 6-3 teams and better made the playoffs. I don't like to see um, a 4-5 team in the playoffs once in a while. It happens. I don't like to see that. Yeah. Um, because sometimes those four or five coaches, they don't even want to make the playoffs. And I say that because I'm going to tell you right now, you're a four or five team. You get uh, – and you're trying to build a program. Um, and um, you get up against uh, – you, you're obviously going to um, not have very many playoff points. And right. You're going to play somebody really good. And just watch the first week of all the playoffs and look at the lopsided scores. So let me play devil's advocate there and all just right. using the West Michigan Conference. You got a North Muskegon. You got a North Muskegon in a year where one of those years where Ravenna was good, Oak Ridge was, maybe makes a run to the state. Because there was a couple years there where multiple teams from our conference were playing for state titles, right? Well, like, in 1997, Ravenna and Oak Ridge yeah. won titles. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's say 97, right? Mm -hmm. And North Muskegon gets beat by state title winner Ravenna, mm -hmm. state title winner Oak Ridge, mm -hmm. Whitehall, who's a bigger school, and... Maybe Montague knocks them off, and then they lose a tough, uh, a tough non-conference game because they scheduled well at the mm -hmm. beginning of the year. Does that four and five team, who's probably better than, I mean, do they not like just playing devil's advocate? Oh, I, oh, I think I think you're right about that. I think if you're on the um, 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 upward swing uh, as far as your team yep. goes, that's one thing. But sometimes when you're I four and agree. five, you're limping in, and you that means you've probably had injuries. Yeah. And um, and I'm and, and I'm just I'm a kind of guy that says um, I don't want to be rewarded if I'm four and five. <laughs> I don't want to be rewarded. I, 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 I got you. I, I want to go six and three or better. And and to make another point in 1997. Yeah. OK. We won our first game. Yeah. We lost to Montague. Yeah. A close game. We lost to North Muskegon, ten to six, a close game. Yeah, and then we went on and won a state title. So yeah, yeah, there, beat Oak Ridge yeah. But then I, we, yeah. were, you know, so yeah. Oh, did you know that little factoid too? Ravana has more state titles than conference titles in football. That's that, well, I mean, that's just a, that's a testament one for to right. Ravana. It's also a testament to how tough our conference is. Exactly. Like, I mean, it, it like. And Ravana could have had a couple, couple more. I mean, yeah. a lot of schools could say that. Well, not a lot, but. Ravana can say it. There was yeah. a couple of years where they were knocking right on the door there. And well, I can tell you right now, and I and I'll say it. Even though <laughs> I, I'm I'm okay with parochial schools because uh, Muskegon Catholic and Steve Zerwan are my favorites, and I'll go watch them and I pull for them. Yeah. But what I would tell you is this: if there were no parochial schools in the state of Michigan, yep, I would have nine state titles. Yeah, I, I, I only got beat by parochial schools. I only got beat by Traverse City, St. Francis, yeah. Detroit, DePores, Muskegon. No, Catholic. yeah, I mean, the first, first state title game I ever watched was Montague 92, and DePores is who we played, and we played them tough, but they're just... Well, I was picked as a uh, like a 50-point underdog, and it was good for me <laughs> because I was in my 20s, and I hey, just came up to Texas. Pull piss and vinegar. And I had no idea, <laughs> okay? So yeah. I didn't realize how good Detroit DePores was. Yeah. And um, so when we went over there, sometimes that's better, just not mm -hmm. knowing. And we were supposed to get smoked, and quite frankly, we went in at halftime 14 to 14, and they gave them a phantom touchdown. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he, he reached out, but he was still three yards away. Yeah. And, um, and then um, it was 14 to 14 with like two minutes and eight seconds left, and then the kid, uh, the kid that went to Eastern Michigan rips off a, a, a punt return, and they end up scoring. And my, uh, my tailback was out of the game, Jeff Ice, and he's mm -hmm. also a linebacker, and I called a – I'm the only guy in the world that ever did this, but we were on the <laughs> three-yard line. I think we had about 97 yards to go, and I called a screenplay. <laughs> and, it, and it was going to work, but the guy who went in for Jeff wasn't where he was supposed to be. 
had he caught the ball. Oh, I would have gone. I had Detroit Deportes all on the right side of the field. We threw all the way back to the left. Had he been there, had been gone. Hey, you never know. I yeah, mean, I'm just yeah. Saying, no. no, I, I, yeah. I mean, that, that's interesting. I, I, again, I would agree with you. I mean, again, I'm a Montague guy. There's, there's Montague got knocked off by good parochial schools oh, a yes. number of times. I was there. So yeah. Yeah, yeah. So like, yeah, that's an interesting take on it. But yeah, our conferences. Uh, I, you know, I moved to the east side of the state after I got out of the service and. You know, we'd go watch, and it, it's Cody's caters here, so, like, we'd go to the uh, Ford Field and watch. And I used to tell those guys on the east side of the state when, when oh, you're just from this little town, and I'm like, I'm just going to warn you, Muskegon area football is no joke. Like, like. Oh, the four on the shore year. Yeah, you know, I was in the, I was two there. Two from the conference. Yep. And then, I mean, Ravenna lost in the semis that year, I want to say, to St. Francis again, yep. I think. Exactly. Yeah, so, so talking about that a little bit, so we, a lot, a lot of cool, like, cool memories a lot of great athletes coming out of the west michigan conference and so something that kind of was i was thinking about the other day and it was because of you so i'm going to throw you a little bit under the bus here tate um but we've been talking a lot tate's going to play basketball for gene gifford at Mm -hmm. at, uh, mcc which i I think is great um and i know that you've wrestled with this topic a little bit and all of us all of us have been athletes all of us have have been in in kind of that mix before but um how do you know when it's time to say when? So that's just a just a question like that that it's in my head. Like, you know, you look at our conference. Not many kids are gonna, and it does happen, but not many kids are gonna go to big big schools, big right. colleges, right? And not many are gonna go pro. It has happened, but very very rare. Most of the kids coming out of our conference, they're gonna go to a junior college. They're gonna go to a Division three program. I got no problem with any of those programs, but as a, you know, as a as somebody who runs a business, I look at Tate and I'm like, why not invest in your career? Does that make sense? Why, why? Like, so I, so I, th- I'm just like wrestling with that again. Cause I was an athlete that went played basketball or tried to play basketball in Muskegon community college. Uh, you know, Connor, my son wrestled with playing golf there this year and like whether he was going to do it. So it's just something I was thinking about. So I'm interested to hear what you guys think and kind of what went through your head in making that decision. And then what you guys think about that. You go ahead first, and then, I, then I'll, I'll piggyback that because I had a daughter that went to MCC, and okay. she was a most valuable setter on the volleyball team. And, really, and I'll, I'll share that with you when you get done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've I've been wrestling with that, and like I'm not wrestling with it anymore because I'm on the team now. I walked on, and so I'm gonna play. But for a solid two to three weeks, I was really wrestling with it because I was thinking about. Well, I could work at Catchmark and mm-hmm. get all my work done. No, be for sure. focused and have all my focus here. Obviously, I got school too, but now I got school, Catchmark, and I'm gonna play basketball. So now I'm juggling three balls. But when to stop is definitely the question that I wrestled with because I thought about, am I going to the NBA? And then I thought about, and I go, well, I'm some six foot, I'm some six foot white guy from Montague, <laughs> Michigan. <laughs> And I can touch the rim on a good day if I stretch. So I'm probably not going to the NBA. But I also thought about how much, what's my my time for how much more can I play competitive basketball? Yeah. And I thought about it and I said, well, I got this year, maybe I play next year, and then what? I'm going to go play intramural, old man open gym on Sundays. That's There's not nothing the wrong with, hey, 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 <laughs> hey, hey now. Oh, man. I did. No, you you just young guys didn't worms. beat us last uh, year. And, and I was going to say oh, something. Oh, man. <laughs> I'm not saying the 45-year-old men with three children don't have game. I'm oh, just man. That was me, man. That was me. He's with talking to me right too, now. With real too, by the way. Oh. <laughs> I'm just saying, how much more time am I going to be able to play organized five on five basketball at a high level yeah <laughs> that's not with old men <laughs> in a closed gym at Man. 11 a.m so you had that plan too 45 year old so three kids <laughs> I'm he, a, first that thing was I'm targeted at somebody Tate, you need to stay close to your mic you keep <laughs> cre- creeping back when you're saying that but um i do want to say something the best that so i ran the uh the white white hall used to have a really great uh, men's league um kurt babcock when he ran white community ad Hey, that the community had ran this wonderful, wonderful men's league, really super competitive. Lots of names from the Muskegon area used to play in it in the open. The best team 
the absolute best team they would have beat anybody in that team was Kim Griffin, Bob Goslin, a bunch of the Shelby guys, and they're in their 40s. Nobody would have beat that team. I'm telling you right now. I've I've seen them, and I've actually played against them <laughs> oh, in yeah. the men's league, oh, and my you gosh. are right about that. And I remember Goslin because he gave me a good elbow. <laughs> <laughs> that's and that's I Shelby never paid him back for, for that. You. So if he's watching, you know, man, I'm, I'm, I've been working out. <laughs> yeah, there you go. But, yeah, no, so, yeah, so I, that makes total sense. And, and from my perspective, I, I want you to know, like, when I got into the service, I played, I mean, the service is big on athletics, and they have post teams and company teams, and I did everything I possibly could. I played sports I didn't even play, but I played volleyball, I played ultimate frisbee, I played basketball, we played soccer, like softball, like all of it. So I get it. It's just a good question because two years putting time into here, probably, I don't know, lifelong, you might be ahead. I like it's, it's so it's a tough decision. So it's just the competitor in some people. Uh, I want to keep competing and I want to scratch that itch that we've talked mm-hmm. about, especially yeah. after getting injured my junior year. And, Yo, you know, I know. I, I know. always want to say what if, but mm-hmm. and so just just for the record, we're completely supporting Tate in all this. He's still gonna work here. He we're gonna have a spot for him. We're probably gonna complain about him behind his back. Like, <laughs> man, we're gonna go down and watch him and support. Him, but I'd like to hear what you what you think about that. I, I'll tell you right now. I had a daughter that uh, my youngest daughter. She was a pretty good setter, and um, and you know when she was at Ravenna, they had you know gone to state title games, yeah. and she was really into it, and so her heart was into it. Uh, I like to. Um, uh, tease her sometimes because I tell her all the money that we paid for the <laughs> summer stuff <laughs> that you do. Um, I don't think school. we broke even with the couple of grand that she got uh, <laughs> for being the setter on the volleyball team, but that's okay too. Yeah. She ended up being your coach, Gene Gifford. He was the AD at the time, and she was his uh, personal secretary. Nice. Um, you know, they let a student do that uh, yep. under the guidance of another secretary. And my oldest daughter did it too, so they made a little money in the process but what I would say about someone that goes to MCC to play or or even a, a small school like Hope you, you don't grow up too fast you're building relationships uh, you know you're, you're playing uh, with other guys who are who are um, competitive guys too and and they're going to be successful and it may even open a door for you in the future um, depending on, on you know what vocation that you end up, and um, and and I think people try to get it. Everybody's trying to get ahead, right? Yeah. All the time, I think that the people that um, take their time and just uh, um, fulfill, like you going and playing, um, you're going to end up um, maybe ahead of them in the long haul. Okay, they might beat you out in the short haul because I felt that way going to Central Michigan for four years and paying for school while I had guys going oh, you're and a making chip? and making. I'm a chip and oh, making money. You Although, didn't tell me. I'm I let a, a chip in the podcast. I, I'm, a, I'm a Bronco. Bronco here. Oh no, but you know what? Um, <laughs> no, I'm just I, I would have been a Bronco too. I just had more friends. At the Central <laughs> at the I time. thought you were going to take a shot. <laughs> right there. Say, I, I was going to go totally, to Western, no, but I was intelligent. No, because, because all my ball players went to Western. I'm oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Charlie Nash. Charlie was there. Western when Charlie was there. Nichols. Yep. Um, and you know, so I'm. I, I like, yeah, I, like no, the I was Broncos. just messing with you. Yeah, no, a lot I, of good uh, friends. So. But but and then then you talk about um, why do people play um, softball? I got a friend Jody yeah. Gould in Muskegon. He's um, sixty plus, and he still yeah. travels the nation. And he's had, he got a fake hip and a fake shoulder and everything. He still does it. Why? Because man, you got to do what your passion is, and that's what you do. And um, and take your time to growing up, dude. You know, don't let everybody tell you you got to get ahead of everybody. That's just not. I think it's different. Dustin's for from Texas, right? You're from Texas. Is that where you're from? I am not, but I lived down there long enough, and then I spend half my time in Kentucky because I have a that's cabin a t- down there, and I go back. And that's forth. a totally down south. Just take your time. Absolutely. Everything is like you know. But, uh, <laughs> but you should. You Life should. is to enjoy, and and you know if you get in a rat race. Yep. You'll, you'll find out when you're older. Uh, you know, my biggest lesson in life was going and watching all these older coaches um, um, at their Hall of Fame banquets. Right. And I uh, saw all of them get up, up to the mic and, and apologize to their kids and to everybody yep. because, oh, you know, I wish I would have spent more time and all that. And yep. I told myself right then. You know what? I'm gonna go long. You know, I'm gonna go real hard right now. But I'm not gonna be one of those guys that gets up on that mic and says that. I didn't spend time. I'm like, yeah, no. Do I... Everything I want to do, and mm-hmm. yeah. You're one of those crazy people that think you can do it all, aren't you? I do do it all. <laughs> <laughs> I do. 
I love it. I, I mean, you know, I just especially now that he's on a podcast, he's done. Yeah, it. Oh yeah, we're not gonna be. Yeah, now that I've done a podcast. <laughs> It does. He's just going to keep showing up here every week and point. be like, hey. "My opinion on the, how how long to continue it." Yeah, I'm it's curious. different for everybody. Yeah, I think, and yeah. um, depends on your situation. Depends on your hunger. If you don't have the hunger, or the the passion for it, then why are you doing it? Yeah. Um, I just, you know, there's a lot of kids that get get to that college level though, and it and it it is a little different than high school. I think sometimes it's it feels a little bit more like. Um, like a job sometimes. I mean, you you got to put a lot of time into it. I, the, uh, the girl I dated at Western was on a four year full ride for soccer and like it was nonstop. She couldn't have a job. She could like, I mean, and she was committed. She was a wonderful soccer player and like, but you couldn't have done anything else. I mean, you had like, she was full in all in on it. Um, and I would say sometimes those teams are, are, are not as close as maybe the high school teams you're on. But, you know, but Tate, you know, we, we want, we want you to succeed. I'm, I'm, it, this is all just a podcast question. Yeah. So you play ball as long as you can. All right. <laughs> yeah, you do that. yeah. So, and people come in, into their own at different times in their lives too. That is true. They that find is, different things at different times in their true. lives. You never know to your point, Dusty, what, what might open, what door might open. Right. Yeah, and I've talked to you a little bit. I'm I'm the exact opposite with my son Connor. I'm like, I think you could play golf at MCC if you wanted to, and he has no interest in it. He's like, I want to go win the club tournament. I want to go like, you know, it's a different sport. You can you can kind of keep doing that, and there's amateur tournaments you can play in, and like, so it's a little bit of a different sport. But yeah, so uh, talking about sports in general, and and uh, Tate, this one might take you a little bit because uh, you're a little young. I mean, you're a youngster, right? Like, um, you know. I feel like sometimes, and I've felt like this more and more as I've, maybe as I've gotten older, I've seen my kids come up through high school, you know, um, that athletics in general at, at, it, are, are not the same as when I was in school. And, and what I mean by that is, like, I just feel like it's dramatically different than it maybe was in the 80s and 90s. Not the on-the-field stuff, but just everything else around it. Um I, the, like I can, and, and maybe I'm weird and maybe, maybe they, this happened, but like, I don't remember too many Saturday, Sunday practices when I was in high school. Once in a while, we'd have a voluntary open gym or we'd, we'd be out. I remember going out and doing things like we would self-organize and go play. Like we played every single day, right? Like it was something we were going to play. Um, you know, I don't remember year round competitions. I don't remember year round practices. I don't remember any of that stuff. And kind of going back to what you said, like I was talking to a good friend of mine, Brian, about his son was a pretty good baseball player on the east side of state. And he told, I remember he told Jake, like, hey, what I would pay for you, like, I could pay for your college, like, like in what, in the time and the money and the. So my question, I guess, is how do you guys feel like sports are different maybe at the high school level now than they were maybe in the 80s and 90s? And is it good? Is it bad? Or what is good? What is bad? What are your thoughts on that? Well, we used to drink out of garden hoses. They drink these <laughs> fancy sports drinks now. No, but Pre-workouts. In, in all seriousness, though, it's, uh, there was a lot of self-organization. Small town like Ravenna, what else were we going to do? Yeah. You know, some of us build hay and did that, and then, then you go play ball or whatever. Yep. Yeah. That's what you do. I, I just remember when we first moved back to Montague, it's like 12 years ago now, um, when I was a kid, Township Park over in Montague, like, if you didn't get over there at 645, there'd be 40, 50 people playing basketball. We'd have people coming from Muskegon. We'd have people from all over the place. And I remember driving by, and I'm like, where are all the people? Like, it, it was just baffled, you know, like, kind of the same thing. Like, that's what we did. You'd go, you'd get out of work, you'd go play ball, then you go out to the lake and swim because you're hot and sweaty, right? And then you come back and play ball till the lights went off. It there wasn't the specialization either. There wasn't, yeah. okay, I'm going to play basketball year-round. Yeah. You know, you play two, three sports, and... I think that helps your skills and helps your competitive competitiveness yeah. not with anything else. It really sharpens that, I think. Yeah. So I'm curious. Like, I mean, you, you've you coached through mm -hmm. it. You lived through it. You got your own kids that kind of went through. What What are your thoughts there? I think that um, technology. <laughs> we all blame technology, <laughs> and I'm going to blame it again. Um, when I see kids at a park now, they're sitting somewhere and they're looking at their phone. Yeah. Um, I go to functions. You're in a tech company right now. You know that. Yeah, right? I know that. <laughs> and, I'm just kidding. And, I, and, I but, agree but, with but, you. But they're always on their phones. It's a distraction. And um, and so that's the number one distraction. But then when you look at how our world has evolved, 
uh, back in the 90s, y- you know, you didn't see um, jet skis all over. <laughs> and, and all the nice, neat things that kids have to play with now uh, compared to the yeah. old days sort of thing. Um, and then I think that um, you're right about that. Um, in my neighborhood growing up over by Reese Puffer, um, the local neighborhood kids, yeah. we, we organized ourselves. Yeah. Um, I think that parents have taken over that. Um, parents um, get a little too involved sometimes. So is it good, good or bad, is it? Um, I, I think that some of it is good if, if they have the right intentions. But um, if... I think that you should try to, at the lower levels, make things fun and, and, and make things, um, every, every drill you do should be really fast and yeah. get over with and, and, and try to take away from the boredom. I mean, I can remember, like, with my daughters uh, going and doing t-ball, right? You know? Yeah. And you go there and you realize that they don't know where first base is. You realize that your shortstop's <laughs> yeah. playing marbles with, with stone, picking grass, or <laughs> you know, <laughs> and and that, yeah, and 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 you're looking and you're like, wow, man, this might be a little too young to get them started, which I think it is. I think yeah. that the dads and the moms should be out catching turtles and frogs and teaching them, you know, taking them camping and doing stuff. Yeah, I think we get them too involved, too quick a little too quick and and um and, and being a coach i know that isn't probably the popular thing to say but i really believe that don't you think though that if you if you do take that approach and i mean it's kind of like what you're telling tate right hey you take your time like i i think you get better more well-rounded athletes at the at the at the right time does that make sense like mm-hmm. i remember like watching it's like every year like with basketball or football they go a little bit earlier like okay you know i i want to say when i was in school they didn't you didn't start playing football maybe till i maybe mini mites were second third grade something like that maybe first but basketball for sure you never started till third or fourth grade you just didn't have the hand eye coordination to do it right like they got like four year olds out there like oh. and it's just kind of ridiculous you know like um but the organization thing i remember my wife coaches varsity soccer at montague and kara was running an open gym indoor open gym for soccer and i went up there one there one she's like just come sit just come hang out i'm gonna be bored the kids are just gonna be playing soccer and we got up there and they all just the kids all just stood there like they they didn't know how to set up and, and they're waiting for the coach or the adult to come in and they didn't know how to separate into teams and it was it was it was weird i'm like like split up you know shoot free throw i like i don't know how you do like yeah, d- yeah. but y- you know what i mean I, it's kind of different so t- i mean you didn't live it but I, I mean do you see any of that you're you know i know your how your dad is and uh, oh. you had older brothers and sisters yeah. so no but. like scott was talking about all these fancy sport drinks i didn't like when i was growing up i was drinking out of the hose and <laughs> yeah. my neighbor kids were coming over the davises the slam Kowskis came over yep. we played football in the yard but nowadays it's crazy i'll i'll go on i'll look at Instagram on my phone and I'll see this nine-year-old doing moves that I can't even do right in basketball and I'm just watching this amaze and this kid he doesn't even know his multiplication tables and, and he's he's, yeah. he's crossing over kids his age and he's shooting from 20 feet out and it's just amazing how much time and effort parents are willing to push their kids into for sports whether it's travel or for their school and it's just I didn't see that as much like even from when I was growing up, not saying that I'm not, not saying yeah. that I'm done growing up, but it's a now <laughs> with kids that are younger than I'll, me. I'll, I'll not, plot with you I'm, in a second. I'm, I'm not saying I am. <laughs> <laughs> but no, the specialization that Scott was referring to and how much time is spent on a sport when it's like, do these kids even play outside anymore? Do they even have yeah. time to be a kid? It's yeah. amazing. Yeah, I mean, I remember some coming. I, you know, my, one of my partners in catch markers, Chris Dawson, is my best friend in high school, right? Like, I remember th- thinking all day on Friday, I couldn't get w- to wait to get out of the school because we were going to go play basketball at his house afterwards. Mm-hmm. We had a, all the kids in the neighborhood. He had a little tiny front yard over on Sheridan, and we had that sucker, like, we we had a football field leveled off, and we were, we were going to do three on three, and we knew, like, you, you lived for that stuff, right? Yeah. Like, in... Um, uh, some of that's lost, I think, and and with especially with year-round competition. I, I as a family, the COVID year when everything shut down in the summer, 
man, it was one of the best summers we've had in a long time, right? No pressure that we weren't missing anything. We weren't, let's go out on the boat and enjoy it. Let's go out in the driveway and play basketball together. Let's go, let's go hit golf balls together, you know? So I don't know. I just, I feel like some of that's been, been missing. But to talk a little bit further though, do you think athletes are different now? Is there, is there a difference in athletes? And, and I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to go out on a limb here and try to kick this conversation off. I feel like I'm going to use the word grit. I feel like the, the generation now doesn't know how to fail sometimes. They, 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 and when they do, they struggle with it. Now I'm not saying everybody, I think you get some of those. I just feel like kids back then had a little bit more grit, a little bit more tenacity. Am I wrong? Well, to, you, you, know, you, you had a group of, of people sometime in our, yeah. you know, in, in this space you're talking about who, who believe that, um, um, well, everybody's got to be a winner. <laughs> we don't have any losers. We're not going to keep score and things like that. Look, part of being an athlete and part of being a person is learning how to lose. Yeah, yeah, okay. I would agree with that. Is is uh, you don't have to like it, but you you need to learn how to do it. And then the most important thing, especially as a coach, but as a player, um, learn how to lose and learn how to let it go. And then because grow. you don't have yep. time, you better get focused on the next mission, the next game. And so um, I think it's okay to um, keep score. I think it's okay, you know, to and everybody uh, doesn't fail. get a medal. Yeah, um, well, that's yeah. to your point too. Fail forward. Yeah, fail forward. Yeah, I we, like that. Yeah, it's it's. I don't know. Like I, I just I do feel like, and I feel like that's really where it's changed. Is that they're so scared of failing that they either won't try or they won't even put themselves right. in that situation where, th where that's even an opportunity or a possibility. Um, but yeah, and I think it's, I think it's hurt a generation of kids. I, re I really do. I, I, you know, and I've, I've done a lot of coaching, not at the varsity level, but it, you know, through up through all my kids stuff. And, um, that's one of the things I've had to adjust how I coach. Cause I was a, a yeller and a, you know, and I had to change a little bit and talk about, hey, it's okay to fail. I'm not yelling at you because you can't fail. Right. But like, we got to get better. We got to learn. We got to grow. You got to try. You know. So I don't know. Tate, what do you think? No, I think, I think you're exactly right, both of you. I mean, if you don't know how to lose from an early age and you don't lose at an early age, you grow up and you get into high school and then you start losing. You don't know how to handle it. And yeah. the biggest part is you don't know how to grow from it. Mm -hmm. So if you start losing at the high school level you're not going to be one to just accept it. Say, oh, I lost. I'm going to learn from this. If I don't want to lose again, I'm going to get better and I'm going to fix my mistakes. You're going to you're going to be pushed away from that by yourself. Right. So I'm not a big fan of the big participation yeah. medal either. And that's yeah. my dad speaking. Yeah. <laughs> well, Jeffrey. <laughs> he raised me that way. So yeah. Right. Yeah. My mom and my dad. Good for him. He raised yeah, me that way. So yeah. I feel the same way. Scott, how do you feel? feel? I agree with you guys completely. In fact, I remember a certain uh, uh, language uh, phys ed teacher who would keep we'd keep playing basketball in gym class until his team was winning. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm gonna tell you right now, I don't think I ever got beat in horse <laughs> in 30 years, well, maybe once. I, and and back then, I play I wouldn't play for money, but I played for a Powerade. Yeah, but I had to be a blue yeah. one. And um, I'm serious. No, no parents in Ravenna got mad. I mean, I won a couple. <laughs> three or four. And and one time I'm, I'm sitting at the lunch room because I ate with the kids in the lunch room. And a mother walks in. She walks up. And she puts that down, and she goes, "Can you just let him win once?" <laughs> yeah. Well, I was I when when Ken was in here, and I didn't go into great detail, but uh, Ken taught PE too. I was in his advanced PE class, and like. Man, like I was talking about playing him in ping pong and pickleball and badminton, and like I'm telling you right now, Ken Diamond was not gonna let one of his kids. You were not gonna win. He he, I told you guys. He came in in badminton one day, and I I, I was competing in badminton, and he came in and he had this graphite badminton paddle or racket, and I'm like, what is that? And he's pulling it out of the. He, I'm, he's like, you're not winning today, you know, and I'm like, man. So I think that's good. I like. Yeah. I got to tell you a quick story about my dad, though. So he would come home, and I'd be in the driveway, 
Yeah, I, I grew up three blocks from East Buffalo. Yeah. I'd be in the driveway shooting baskets, and either by myself or with my buddies. By the way, basketball is my favorite sport. <laughs> That's and a good I'm, sport. And I'm, and I'm shooting baskets, and my dad would roll up. You know, he was a factory guy, and he'd roll up, and he'd say, well, what'd you do today? Cut the grass? No. <laughs> well, what'd you do? Um, I shot some baskets. I went through the football a little bit, you know, took a couple of swings. He'd say, well, you're not going to get paid for that you know um you, you know and he, he would always be telling me i'm not gonna get paid so yep. now we're in the playoffs and i've already won a couple state titles and and my dad has to uh come to the school to get a playoff ticket that i had for him in the office but he stopped by the gym and he walks in and i've probably got about 40 kids in there and it's right in between class so everybody's shooting baskets right and I go, because I had complete control of my classes, as Scott would do. <laughs> and I, I believe it. And I said, hey. And they all stopped, and they got a hold of basketball. You can't dribble when I'm talking. You know? Yep. And I said, this is my dad right here. I said, tell him what I do for a living. And they all, <laughs> at the same time, went, shoots baskets. <laughs> 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 I it was the best it. moment with my dad. You know, you, I think, you know, he had to walk out of it before he started crying. Cause, yeah. Yeah. Made a living shooting baskets, man. Yeah. I, you know, I got a funny, very similar story. Not, not about shooting baskets, but my, my dad was an excellent golfer. And he, he wanted me to be a golfer. Man, that was in the worst way. And I, I always played. I was a good athlete. I'd pick up a golf club, you know, the day before golf practice in the fall. He never let me play football. Like, not until my freshman year in high school. He's like, it's too rough. You're going to get hurt. In freshman year in high school, he's like, you can play football. And I'm like, man, I'm so far behind a lot of these other kids. But he, so I'd always play golf in the fall, right? Like, and uh, he, so I never really like enjoyed it like he did, though. Like, I just played because I was an athlete and I, I could swing a golf club and I was waiting for basketball to start because that was the sport. I, I love basketball. Yeah. It didn't love me back very much, <laughs> but I loved it. It was, it was wonderful. So I played for years. I mean, years and years and years and never be, he never, ever let me win in golf <laughs> and I'm talking like he would pull shots out like I, I had him beat in a club tournament one year he 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 hold one from 200 yards for an eagle to close me and I'm like I finally beat him I was 30 years old I finally beat him and this is my dad to a t walking off the golf course he says I said w I said what'd you end up with and he's like 81 I said I shot 79 today he didn't talk to me. He walked over to the van. He opened the door, shut it, locked the door, and rolled the window up. And he's like, you had to have cheated. And I'm like, I didn't. He, the old man accused me of cheating. And I said, you're kidding me right now. But yeah, I mean, like, that's, that's kind of, you know. And of course, later, he's like, hey, good round, Brent. Like, you know. Fast like, forward but, all these years later, and I see you doing the same thing with oh, Connor. Oh, Connor. Yeah, he, has, go. He, he has got me, though. He got me early. Like, he got me real early. It was a bad round, but. Uh, no, but like yeah, that stuff, I think like, you know, I, I think being, I think that grit comes from, you know, probably some of that with the, the reason you were successful in what you did is because, you know, your dad gave you that little, like, you know, you can't oh, no make money playing sports, it. No doubt you know? about it. You know, my dad was uh, one of the better football players to ever play at Muskegon High School. Yeah. You know, I mean, he was the star running back when Earl Moore was a quarterback. Oh, wow. And they won the state title that year in That's football amazing. and in uh, basketball? Base baseball. Or baseball? Baseball. baseball. Okay. And they still did really well in basketball and they had a great team. But yeah. So I grew up listening to the Earl Morrow stories and I knew pretty much everybody on my dad's team because that's what he talked about. Yeah. You know? well, that's funny. That's funny. Well, you know what, guys? Uh, we're right about an hour now. Um, and uh, Billy will kill us if we go over to an hour and 40 minutes like we usually do. So um, any last thoughts on, on uh, sports in general, football, podcast? Dustin, you got anything, any words of wisdom for us? before? Well, all I can say is I can't wait to see um, the Mona Shores matchup yeah. this week because Rockford – yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. Yep. And I can't wait to see what Muskegon does going down to De La Salle. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. Uh, Did I, 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 the, this is going to tell us a lot. Did Muskegon lose last week? No, but no, they were they down 14-6 at halftime. Oh, that's yeah. that's what I saw. And their defense picked it up. But, you were, you know, um, De La Salle is oh, yeah, they're solid. Division two. Yeah. So mm -hmm. yep. We'll find yep. out if Muskegon's really ready right yep. now. Yep. Yeah. Tate, anything from you? You're not going to come work full-time, give up the dream? <laughs> no, you're the good? The dream, it's 
<laughs> not the biggest dream ever. <laughs> it, hey, I'm man, it's a dream, Mitch. If you're gonna any, if you're gonna do anything, do it 100. percent Don't back off it. Go be the best basketball player at MCC you can possibly be. And you'll learn how to be a good person. Because yeah. Gene Gifford. He's a good dude. Is a good dude. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Shelby guy. Mm. They grow him good up there. So, well, Dusty, it was a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank Thanks so for much. joining us today. You're invited back anytime you want to be on a <laughs> podcast. Um, we really appreciate you taking the time to participate. Thank you. Appreciate um, it. Without, without folks being willing, we wouldn't, we wouldn't have a podcast. So um, thanks again to our sponsors, Grieve Law, Big Stone Therapies, Green Ridge Realty, Chris Dykema and Sarah Real, North Grove Brewers, Foundation Systems of Michigan and John Botten, Coldwell Banker and Mr. Dave Dusenberry, Shide Plumbing, Heating and Cooling, and of course our title sponsors, uh, Van Dyke Mortgage and Durga Insurance Group. On behalf of Catchmark, thanks again and join us next time for our podcast. Thanks, everyone.